So in today's video, we are see that how we can create a 3D part modeling in Creo Parametric. So before we have to go into the part modeling or 3D part modeling, we need to learn about that how the sketching is work. So we already see how we can do the sketching in Creo Parametrics. Now we are moving to the 3D part modeling. For the 3D part modeling, you need to keep it in your mind that you only created 3D part modeling with the help of a 2D sketch. So if you know that how you can create a 2D sketch in the Creo Parametric, it is easy for you all to easily able to create a 3D object. So again, we need to go and select a working directory. This is an important part because each and every time we need to set a particular folder where our all the drawings should be saved there. So I already saved the working directory here. So saving that you need to select it, select the particular folder and it automatically save it to here. Your all the drawings, whether it is a 2D sketch, part modeling, assembly, all these things are should be saved on the working directory only. Now we are moved to the 3D part modeling. So the process is same. You need to go to the new. Here you need to uh, going for the sketch. Instead of going for the sketch, you need to select a part modeling. Now you see that here we have a subtype. In the subtype, you need to select a solid. We have a three options. First one is a solid, sheet metal, bulk. But in our tutorial, we can see right now we can see that how we can use the solid part modeling. So what is the solid part modeling? The object which has their mass, the object which has a close object or a solid object, that type of object is known as a solid object. So again, we need to select a file name. Let's suppose I am just writing ex01. You can type any of the things. Now, here we have a common name. If you want to set a common name, you can set it here. If you don't want, you don't be able to. But the file name is compulsory. Why? Because at the time of a assembly, when we going for the drafting, after the assembly, when we are going for the drafting, for creating a bill of material, it is required to save your part with a particular name. So let's suppose we need to create any kind of a turbine or any kind of a part modeling object such as a turbine or maybe windmill or any other, let's suppose the vehicles, car, bus, truck, any of the thing which we need to create it. So what is happened? We need to create the all the part. Okay. Either it is an engine, either it is a clutch, brake, all this thing. So it is easy for us to generating a bill of material. So that we need to set the name here, exact name of the part. We see that thing at the time of a drafting or at the time of our assembly also, we can see that what are the requirement of this particular providing the name. So. Right now, I am putting the name exercise 01. You can type any of the name. Now, we have a third option is known as a use default template. Let's suppose you are working on a different companies like maybe uh, LNT, Infosys, or maybe uh, TCS, maybe any of the companies are there and number of companies are there. So on that particular company, they have some of the templates. So if you don't have right now, you need to select use, you need to just uncheck this dialog box, select OK. When you just selected it, here it show you one more dialog box is there. It show you the templates. So here in my system, it is by default save as a MMNS part solid ABS. It means that meter, mm, millimeter Newton second part solid ABS. So each and every time, whenever you want to create an object or a part, you need to select that particular option. Now we are just select OK, that's it. So when we select OK, my system is running and show me the 3D part modeling interface. Now 
we are coming to the 3D part modeling interface. Here, we have a different, different commands. We have a Boolean's operation, we have a datum, we have a shapes, engineering, editing, surfacing, and model inlets. We have a different, different commands. In the Creo, we can easily able to simulate also. We can do the analysis. We can rendering the things. So we can, most of the things we can you know, done in the Creo. So we can see all the commands one by one. So before that, I just give you a brief introduction about this interface. So as you all able to see here in the top menu or menu bar, we have a different, different commands or different, different icons. Then we have a ribbon bar. It consists of all the relevant command which we need to use it here in the Creo parametrics. Now we have a modern tree, we have a floating keyboard, and we have a, this symbol. This symbol represents me a three planes. Those planes are front plane, top plane, and right plane. So as we all know that if we want to create a 3D object, the 3D object must be contain the three axes. X, Y, and Z. This plane represented the two axes, X and Y, Y and Z, and Z and X. So, if we want to create a 3D object, we need to create a 2D drawing, then we can convert it. So, for creating that, you get to know that here in the datum plane, you see that the symbol known as a sketch. This is a similar like a sketch only. So, Whenever if you want to create an object, a 3D object, you need to first create a sketch. So most of the things are same and most of the things we can see after in the after classes also. So we are just started how we can create a 3D part modeling. For the 3D part modeling, as I told you recent right now, that we need to create a 2D sketch. For creating a 2D sketch, you need to go to the option known as a sketch option. So here, when I just selected it, here we got a, in the right side, we got a small pop-up box. What is that pop-up box? It show me that you need to select a plane. So for creating any kind of a 2D sketch, you need to select a plane. Either it is a XY plane, YZ plane, and ZX plane, any of the plane you can select it. So right now, what I am doing it, I am just selecting a front plane to creating my object. So I just selected it, then I just select a sketch. When I selected it, now see my user interface is changed now. We got all the 2D commands which we see in the 2D sketching time. So what I do? So but if I just go to the line command and try to creating a line, then my line is little bit different. It is not in 2D plane. As you able to see that, it is not in a 2D plane. It is in another plane. So I just selected it, deleted it. Okay, I just delete this sketch. Now, so we need a 2D plane in front of us. For that, we have a one option in the floating tab is known as a sketch view. So you can just directly click it here in the sketch view, in the floating bar, or in the setup bar also we have a same option. Either just clicking here or either just clicking here. So if I just selected it, see, it just bring my plane in front of me. Now, we need to create a one sketch. For creating a sketch, I just creating a one simple sketch. That is the sketch which I need to create it. I just create it a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. That's the plane. I want that this line should be into a vertical line, but it is not. So we are using the vertical constraint, selected that line. Now my line is converted into a vertical line. Similarly, we need to provide a dimension. So I am assuming that this dimension should be a 250 mm and this should be a 350 mm. So 
I want to divide this 250 into three parts. So it is easy for me to dividing it or either I just put 240. So it is easy, easy for calculation also. Now, if I just divided 240 into three points, we have a first option is ATM. Again, here we got an equal constraint each and every time. So I just deleted that equal constraint and going to the equal constraint, selecting that, selecting that. These two are become an equal constraint. Again, we are providing the dimension tab, this and this point, put it here, see, it's automatically come into a T. Now I don't want, I just deleted it. And this point I take, I just select it into 360. So it is easy for me to put 120 here. And I want this dimension or this dimension. So with the help of a dimension tab only, I need to select it, put it here. So this is the AT I don't want, I deleted it. And this should be 120 again. Okay, so, okay. This I don't want this to be 120. Yeah, okay. Now see, we can easily able to create this drawing. Now, our 2D sketch is done, but we need to create into a 3D object. For that, I just select okay. Now we are coming again, we are coming to the 3D modeling space, but I have a sketch but it is only on X or Y or maybe in any of the two, two, 2D dimensions. I want to provide the height of the object or width of the object. Or providing that we have an option called extrude command. When I just selected it, it just provide the, my 2D, it just converted my 2D object into a 3D object. Similarly, we have a different, different types of option in the extrude also. I just select a symmetry option. So it means that if I just provided the dimension of maybe 250, so 120 from 125 from here and 125 from here, it just created it. If you satisfied, select OK. So like that way, you can easily able to extrude your object or basically you can easily able to create a 3D object. So each and every time, if we want to create an object, we need to keep it in our mind that we have a two option in any of the things. Either for creating an object or 3D object, we need to add a material or we need to remove a material. Now, let's suppose I want to delete it, this particular point or I want to create a hole on this 3D object. So what I do, I just select an object, go to the extrude again, Again, we are coming to the 2D sketch. Now I am selecting a circle here, put it here, select OK. Now I need to remove it. For that, here we got a one new option is known as a removal of material. So if you want to remove material, you need to select this option. But if you don't want, if you want to add a material, you can select, you can just uncheck it. So right now we needed to remove a material. I just selected it. Now select OK. That's it. So as we saw today that how we can create a 3D drawing, how we can uh, convert our 2D drawing into a 3D drawing, and then how we can use the extrude command. Now, in the next class, we can see that how we can use the different different 3D commands the revolve, sweep, sweep blend and all the different type of a command. So hope you get it for today's lecture. So the classes end. If you have any kind of a doubt, then let me know.